This channel is made possible by viewers like you. My viewers, subscribers, and patrons greatly help to keep this channel going. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for all of you. Please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any uploads. And if you'd like to go the extra mile, please check out my Patreon page. For just a dollar a month, you'll get access to what I'm working on, previews of upcoming content, and even early videos, along with other tier options for those that are interested. Thank you, and now on to the video. I am sure you have played a few games where after diving into it, you are absolutely loving it, or you can't get enough of it. Then you check if other people are talking about the game, and you notice that it's just not getting the attention it deserves. Sure, the game may even have high critical or more importantly, player scores, but based on what you have played, it should place higher than what it is. These are the types of games I generally try to hunt for, the ones that might need some more attention and bring something very special to the table, either through a cool story, interesting mechanics, or fusing together some mechanics from well-known games into something new. Trey Pang 2 feels like one of those games. It does seem to be a situation where if you look and see what people are saying about this game, they all tend to be pretty positive. The problem is, is that just not enough people are talking about it. It's a title that I cannot get enough of, and I'm glad that I took the time to play this one and I still want to come back for more. Trey Pank 2 is the type of experience that many of us have asked for big studios to provide. A single player focused game with plenty of value packed in. Trey Pang could have sold with just its horde mode, because this has got to be one of the best versions of it. Much of that comes from the options that you have in combat, along with the variability that horde modes lend themselves to. You can play the same situation multiple times, and based on what choices you make, and then the quick pivots that you need to do in the middle of combat, you pretty much have an endlessly entertaining experience. The Horde mode very much presents what this game does very well. It's all action focused, and playing the same level does not mean the same experience as the last. Now in fairness, I do have some issues with Trey Pang, and most of that is with parts of the campaign, but when you are in a shootout, it's absolutely awesome. The shooting in this is equal parts violent and visceral. The sound effects feel punchy, like there's weight behind each of your shots, especially when firing the shotgun. You feel like a god when you have this weapon. Impact-wise, there is a liberal use of blood and dismemberment. Heads and limbs can be all blown off, or in some cases just outright explode. You get a nice variety of weapons to use as well from different automatics, a very, very useful shotgun, along with some really fun heavy and explosive weapons. Trey Pang has a decent amount of customization with each of its weapons. This can range from putting on different attachments that change how the guns feel and operate. The most interesting of these is that you can change your weapon entirely into something that feels completely like a new weapon. For example, the shotgun can be equipped with incendiary rounds, adding some dragon's breath to it. Not every weapon has this type of stuff, but the ones that do are really cool to try out. Again, this really comes down to player preference on what you want to use. The general action is so fast and frenetic that you will find yourself dropping and swapping out weapons often to get through some of the harder firefights. While this might be annoying to drop a favorite because you cannot find ammo for it currently, continually changing it out adds that variability and really makes you feel like you are participating in a well choreographed action scene. Plus the horde matches have supply stations that allow you to quickly go back and get that old favorite if you so choose. Gameplay flow is what Trey Pang completely excels at. To me, this feels like a mixture of fear and black shooting from the stellar feel and impact of your weapons, along with some of the environmental destruction. Then add on the slow-mo and supernatural elements from fear, and then the cloak ability and attachment system that feels ripped right from Crisis. Personally, I'm a fan of all three of those games, so to me, seeing them all thrown together in a blender and then comes out this really fun game as well. It also makes you wonder why no one has really done anything like this to any of these other franchises, or tried to create spiritual successors outside of this game. These developers saw an opportunity here, wear their influences proudly, and deliver on what made those games fun, with an understanding and talent in their execution. The combat flow is so addicting, and this is why the Horde mode is probably what I would call the main mode to the game. There's so many maps, the variability, and situations are endless. And when you finish a shootout, you just want to go right back into another one. This is where the old school charm lies. We don't have experience point systems, perks, loot, or anything like that. 
The satisfaction comes from the minute to minute gameplay, and that is something that deserves a lot of praise. You see a new enemy who has a new weapon they are using on you. Take them out and now you have a new toy to play with, enhancing that moment as well. Plus the ability and fun movement options keeps everything brisk, to the point and wildly fun. You can slide and jump kick. The cloak is great for a means to be able to get some breathing room, along with allowing you to rethink your next move. Unaware enemies can be grabbed and used as human shields. One thing that never got old was pushing them into other enemies, with a live grenade strapped to them. The ragdoll usually goes nuts here, and I honestly always wanted to do this in each of the firefights. I will touch on the campaign a little bit. Overall, it's fun, but not the best aspect to the game. I had some issues with some of the boss fights along with some of the late game areas, having enemies that just seemed to take you out in one hit. Something I really did like was the use of unlockables within this title. You can unlock a variety of weapons, attachments, and many different cheats to help change the experience. You don't see this stuff much anymore, and I miss this type of thing. Unlockables are something that I loved in older titles growing up, but nowadays you would see this type of stuff sold as DLC, so it makes it fun to earn this again here. So yes, it is only a single player game, but it comes packed with stuff to enjoy. Treypang 2 is a game that I do not understand why no one is talking about it. It's a title that most certainly deserves more attention than it's getting. Thankfully it does have high scores wherever you look, and the players seem to love it. But considering how much fun it is, and the excellent combat flow, this title should be attracting more eyes to it. This is a type of first person shooter and single player experience that many of us miss and honestly want. It is available on most of the modern platforms, and runs really well on consoles too. I am enjoying the campaign, and overall this game is just great. Sure, the campaign has some bumps in the road too, but once you start digging into those horde maps, I feel like I could play this title forever. One request I would love to throw out there is to have a two-player option for the horde mode. I have no idea if this can be done with this game in its current form, but something like this would push the replay value even further. Either way, Treypang 2 is such a wildly awesome and entertaining title. It is priced well and comes packed with content, and when it comes to the shooting, it respects the originals that it's taking inspiration from, and delivers something that pays tribute to them and feels a bit all of its own. Even if you just casually play first-person shooters, you should give this one a try. Have you played Treypang 2? Would you like to see more games inspired by fear, crisis, or even black? Let me know all of this in the comments down below. If you're interested in being notified of new videos, please hit the subscribe button and bell. And if you'd like to support the channel and get early access to content, please check out my Patreon. All of the links will be at the end of this video and within the description. And thank you very much for watching.